And we are back at it again. Hey everyone, it's Gobby here and we are back playing DDLC Plus Side Stories. So we left on a bit of a cliffhanger last time, so if you uh, if you have no idea what happened in in part one, please go watch it so you understand part two. Anyway, let's get right into it. And please don't forget to like and subscribe for it if you want more. Oh yeah, and I also know it was a uh, it was um DDLC's uh, sixth anniversary yesterday. Um, and yes, I I did say happy birthday on my community post and said happy sixth anniversary for the game. But that's because the game means a lot to me. Okay. Anyway, let's get right into it. Yes. Another day passes in a flash, and it's already time for the next club meeting. Although Monica should have come up with a plan for today's club tasks, she hasn't been able to shake her guilt and anxiety after reading Sayori's poem. I'm so stupid. How did I let myself be the center of attention? Sayori is going through these kinds of feelings and I'm letting her comfort me instead of the other way around? What kind of club president does that? This whole time, I didn't think to ask about her own feelings. So much for the stupid for the stupid vision. Sayori enters the classroom with her usual smile. But upon seeing the downcast Monica, her smile quickly fades into an expression of concern. Monica? Is everything okay? I'm... I'm really sorry. I'm such a terrible friend. Huh? What... What, what are you even talking about? You're an amazing friend. Monica shakes her head. I made this all about myself. Even you said so yesterday. You told me that I'm trying to make the club that I need the most, right? But my problems are so trivial compared to yours. Sayori quickly respond, qu responds quietly. What are you even talking about? But as she says that, her face darkens. Through the silence, Monik Sayori mutters her realization. I... I left my folder here. Monica stares blankly ahead, unable to come up with a response. I... wasn't ready to share those. Now you're worrying about me. I don't want that. But why? We're friends, right? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Friends look out for each other. I want to be here for you as much as you're here for me. Another long moment passes in silence. The air is incredibly heavy. This is different. It wasn't just about you yesterday, it was about the club. Besides, things were so happy yesterday. You don't need to do all you don't need to do all this all of a sudden. I don't want it. I like happy. So, if you do this then you're you're just being selfish huh monica ma massages her forehead struggling through the frustration of such a paradox it's understandable that sayori isn't ready to share certain things but as fair as it is for monica to pry it's also painful for monica to force herself to ignore the needs of her friend i'm i'm sorry i looked i disrespected your privacy no, don't blame you. Don't I don't blame you for looking. You would have at least needed to check if it was mine. Yeah. Monica takes a deep breath. Okay. I understand that you don't want me to worry. And I think I'll be able to put this aside so that we can move on. But can you promise me something? Promise you what? Monica pauses to collect her thoughts. 
This is the literature club. It's a place where people can express themselves in the ways that knife that life normally doesn't allow them to. That's the vision. In fact, it's our vision. Right the way into your heart or whatever. So I just want you to promise me that you'll remember that too. It doesn't have to be right now, but I want to be here for you when you need it. I want us to be ourselves, like that. Sayori smiles gently. I'll promise if you promise. Unable to help it, Monica returns Sayori's smile. I promise. Me too. As the conversation closes, the mood in the room is lifted. With that behind them, it's time to proceed with the club activities. So, want to teach me about poetry? Huh? But, what about recruitment? It's fine, we have plenty of time for that. But right now, I feel like I want to do this. I mean, I do have to fulfill my end of the promise, you know. <laughs> No way I could say no to that. Just don't expect much. I do a lot of writing, but it's not like I'm a schooler or a, a scholar or anything. That's fine. I think I just need like some motivation. I never know where to start when it comes to writing poems. Starting isn't so hard. You kind of just need to write down your feelings and see where it takes you. Yeah, but that wouldn't come out any good. It's not supposed to! You're gonna have to fight your perfectionist mind on this one. <laughs> you can just start by writing your feelings and see what kinds of things it makes you think of. And then you can turn your feelings into a little story. You can get your feelings down first and then make it sound pretty later. It's like... It's not like building a railroad where you go from one end to the other. It's more like a collage where you find all the things you want to put in and then you arrange them in a pretty way. At least that's how I do it. It's not like it's the only way. But it's a really good way to not get stuck right at the beginning. I understand. Yeah. I always get so caught up in how it sounds that I forget what's really, what's actually important. Monica pulls out a pen and paper to start writing. Stop being a perfectionist, you idiot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Monica scribbles out, you idiot, after she, after she writes it down. Damn, she has no confidence in herself whatsoever, does she? No, keep it! What? What? Why? Are you calling me an idiot? Of course not! But the point is that you're supposed- you're not supposed to pol police your feelings right. Police your feelings... right. Be as dramatic as you want! <laughs> but I was just... well, yeah. Underneath the scribble, Monica rewrites, you idiot. She stares at the paper. Her words stare back at her. It's kind of funny how I wrote down what I'm mad at myself for, and then I did that exact same thing, and I did that exact thing anyway. This is really going to take some getting used to. I believe in you. Thanks, I do too. Me, I mean. But also you, of course. <laughs> Monica continues the exercise, jotting down her thoughts. It's surprisingly quite a struggle to write about overthinking it. Without, to write without overthinking it. But after a while, with Sayori's guidance and encouragement, Monica's sheet of paper begins to look fairly lively, peppered with all of her random thoughts. Phew. Monica looks up and down at her sheet. Gosh, I feel so tense looking at this. I hate it. But it's also kind of liberating. Mmm. 
I can tell how, how hard you're trying. It makes me happy. I think you'll be good at writing poems. <laughs> Don't give me too much credit. I'd have to try really, really hard at it. But I think it's something that I'll enjoy doing. With you. Sayori beams. I'll stop here, but we still have time. Let's try to work on a new flyer for the club. I won't be so picky about the language. Yay! Let's do it! Monica and Sayori proceed with their work. With each passing day, the two of them become more confident in the club. Not simply from their recruitment planning, but from their vision as well. As their bond strengthens, so does the essence of the literature club. Finally, they begin to truly feel it's only a matter of time before they find more members. Another day passes. As usual, Monica is the first one to the club room. With her is a printout of the revised Literature Club flyer, complete with all the new ideas Monica and Sayori came up with. If only this was the flyer we gave to that one reading girl the other day. It's so much more attractive than the old one. But the new catchphrase is featured clearly in the center of the flyer. Right the way into your heart. Surely common sense would say that one writes from the heart, not into the heart. But the message being delivered is that... Is that one can use writing to discover themselves. Hopefully Monica and Sayori had thought, and that it would be enough to garner some curiosity from students. Why do I feel so tense looking at this? Monica thinks back to the previous meeting when she performed the writing exercise. Was I always this bad at expressing myself? How am I supposed to be president if I can't even demonstrate what the club is supposed to be about? The literature club is truly beginning to take form. But with that, the weight on Monica's shoulders only becomes heavier. Debate club was always about rigid, rigid, rigid structure, formulating airtight points and counterpoints, and delivering them with conviction. It was about the person on the outside. That's why Monica was so good at it. It existed entirely within her realm of comfort. It's suffocating. I need to break through this metal, mental wall. I need to learn to express myself for real. Monica pulls out a sheet of paper and grabs her pen. She presses the tip of the pen firmly against the paper. But her hand doesn't move. Instead, a tiny blot of ink collects around the tip of her pen. Monica lifts her pen and stares at the little blotch. For some reason, she feels compelled to run her finger across it. Alright then. As she does so, the black ink smears across the paper, ruining Monica's canvas. Oh yeah, I see what Monica meant when she said, like, if you if you leave your pen for too long, you'll just end up with a big, with a dark puddle of ink. So that's what's happened here. Fuck. Out of spite for herself, Monica presses her pen down and once again, letting the ink collect. She creates a second smear on the paper. Come on, Monica. Just move your hand. Monica writes. This is what I get for seeking perfection, a stain. Monica slides the paper away from her and puts her head down on the desk. Yikes. The air conditioner seems louder today. I'm here! Hi. Monica hears Sayori approach her desk, then stop for a second, probably reading the piece of paper. Then she sits down in, in, in the adjacent desk. Bad day? Mm -hmm. Me too. 
You too? The new flyer looks so good. You've been working so hard. On the club, but also something else, I think. I can't do it. I'm sorry. It's so hard to just be vulnerable. Hmm. Sayori takes the sheet of paper from Monica's desk. She writes something down, then stares at it for a while. Can I trust you? Of course. You can trust me with anything. Sayori gazes at Monica with sadness in her eyes. Understanding the signal, Monica takes the paper from Sayori's desk and reads it. Holy sh... Oh my god! Oh god! Well, that's the end of today's episode. Hope you... Nah, I'm kidding. We'll keep going. <laughs> I had to do that. Sorry. Sorry, I'm just used to ending... I'm, I'm used to ending these videos on cliffhangers at this point. Sayori? This... This is really hard for me. Her voice shakes. So if I can do it... Then you can too! Because you're like a million times better than me. That's completely not true. Sayori takes a deep breath trying to steady herself. That's something about me that I've never told anyone before. Even now my head is like screaming at me to stop. Wait, you don't... You don't have to force yourself. I mean, just because of the promise yesterday... I want to. It just feels right. I mean, maybe it's part of the reason I came to this club in the first place. This is the literature club. I trust you more than I'm scared. Oh, th at those words, Monica stands up. Sayori so must have taken days to work up the courage for this. With Monica's own futile but genuine efforts, futile, sorry, futile, but genuine efforts, actually the push that Sayori needed. Sayori's deliberate breaths can be heard over the air conditioner. As she prepares herself to continue, Monica waits in gentle silence. I have this problem where I get really upset when people worry too much about me. I, I can't control it. It's like, why waste your energy worrying about me when you can just be happy instead? So I never tell anyone about these kinds of thoughts that I have. It's so much easier to just smile and help everyone else be happy. But that's... terrible. That's what Monica wants to say, but she stops herself in fear of saying the wrong thing. It's just that if everyone knew about it, they wouldn't treat me the same anymore. Like, whenever I'm not smiling... Everyone would worry about me and ask me what's wrong. I know that because it used to be like that. Sayori pauses, seeming to recall something in the past. I... I just want everyone to be happy. That's the most important thing to me. And letting people look inside my head doesn't bring happiness to anyone. Sayori pauses again, her solemn expression making her look almost like an entirely different person. How did you find the courage to tell me this? You're not worried that I'll be one of those people, too. I am worried. Part of me really hates myself for doing this. But another part of me, I think, just felt like it would be different this time. Whenever we talk about what the club is supposed to mean, I kept feeling like it was right for me to do. Especially after you've been trying so hard to express yourself, too. It just made me feel like I could say it in confidence and our friendship doesn't have to change. <laughs> it's so silly. The club is only two people, but it already means this much to me. Monica feels a tightening sensation in her heart. A feeling of connection as Sayori's emotions radiate between them. Me too. I was so lost until you showed up. You're so brave, Sayori. You're so strong and brave. I don't even compare. 
Monica steps forward. But if nothing else, I can at least offer you some hug energy. If you'd like. Oh god, this music's good. I like this music. Wordlessly and without a smile, Sayori rests her forehead on Monica's shoulder. Through their contact, Monica can almost feel the, tor the torrent the torrent of thoughts swimming in Sayori's head. And in this moment, enchanted by the air of the club, Monica re realizes that, that of all the days of the past, this is the one where she really, really hopes that nobody new walks through the door. She speaks softly. You're like the sweetest girl I've ever met. You can say anything. I'll never judge you. I promise. Sayori's breath begins to quiver. She takes several deep breaths, trying as hard as she can to start speaking to say the things she never once dared to say out loud. Finally, she speaks in a choked voice. I'm... I'm so worthless. I'm worthless and everyone would be better off without me. She suppresses a sob as a tear falls down her cheek. I'm just an inconvenience to everyone. I'm not good at anything and it just feels like everyone just has to put up with me and I hate it. I hate it. The more Sayori speaks, the more she fails to control her voice, falling victim to the overwhelming sadness, clutching at her throat and chest. I don't want to have these thoughts. I want them to go away and now I'm making you put up with me and I just want to die. As soon as Sayori loses her composure, Monica becomes determined to keep her on. She only wants to be what Sayori needs right now, so she won't let any sadness show. Her voice comes through as soft and gentle. This isn't putting up with you. It's just being your friend. Monica offers a few words of comfort, but she knows Sayori said it herself that the thoughts Sayori experiences are ones that don't belong, and Monica can't magically make them go away. The most she can do is help Sayori battle them like any good friend would do. You have so much value. To me and your other friends too. This club wouldn't have been the same without you. I really, really mean that. You coming here was the best one that could have happened. Even if we never got any other members, I would still be happy. That's what you brought here. You brought us a vision and you also brought happiness. And that's your favorite thing to do, right? Sayori doesn't respond, but Monica feels her gently nod. No more words are needed between them. Okay, that was wholesome. That was wholesome. The two share their embrace for a while longer, Monica letting Sayori take as much time as she needs. Once her breathing steadies and her sniffles fully cease, Sayori lifts her head and wipes her eyes. I guess I needed that. That was so wholesome, I swear to god. But it also makes me think... It's kind of odd, because like, if Monica really did care this much about Sayori, why the hell did she do all that crap in the game? Unless... Hmm... Some days are harder than others. Well, I'm here whenever you need me. But any other time, I'll make sure that things are the way they usually are. If that's what makes you happy. Mm hmm. Thanks. You're the best. No, you are. The two exchange smiles. You know, I'm sorry to bring this up all of a sudden, but have you considered talking to a professional? Sayori nuts. It's scary. Since it's already so hard to tell people. Yeah. Well, of course, it will always be your choice, but if you're ever looking to find the courage for it, I can do my best to help you. Thanks. I think it helps knowing that you would. Sayori suddenly yawns and stretches. Wow, that made me tired. And hungry. <laughs> well, I won't make you do any work today if you're not up for it. No, I want to. I mean, I can say that. It's definitely one thing that makes me happy. Monica smiles. But I want to get a snack first. All of a sudden, the sound of the door causes the two of them to turn their heads. The door opens halfway, then stops. A face peeks inside. A face that seems familiar. 
Oh, come on! Bro, you can't end it there. Huh? Mail. Okay, so I've la last, uh, I've untitled mail group, do not use, Monday, December 9th, 2019, 12, 6 minutes past 12 a.m. pretty much. Have a nice weekend. I'm on leave the rest of the, um, I'm on leave the rest of the week. Contact Ravi if you need to schedule server time, but I expect my job to run for a few days since we've collected so much data this week. How about we arrange a meeting to discuss the results when I return? What? Okay, so... I just got mail. <laughs> um, that's kind of has, that kind of has me intrigued. That is actually intriguing. I'm kind of curious to where this goes. But I'll find out eventually. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I uh, can't wait to uh, upload the, the like, understanding part one. That will come out next week. Same with understanding part two as well. Hope you all enjoyed. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. And please comment to let me know what you thought about this episode. I'd really appreciate it. Alright, bye.